This isn't a shock. Michigan has a good defensive line. Okay. Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, a lot of attention with both of those guys coming back. Both have shut down transfer rumors pretty directly so far in spring camp. Um, they didn't address it a ton because why would you previously? But both stated why they're still here and, and you know what their path forward is at Michigan. I want to talk about the edge, though, and the, the two guys that are going to lead the way. That That's Derek Moore and Josiah Stewart. And Josiah Stewart we got to see today. I was really impressed with some things he said about what he learned from the previous year and, and the step up he's hoping to take as a player. Made a lot of comments, though, about as a leader and bringing other guys along with him. Mm -hmm. Specifically, TJ Guy is a name we've heard about, arguably backing him up on the weak side. And then the two... Again, I'd have to look. I don't remember off the top of my head if, if it's sophomores or redshirt freshmen, like Brock said. But Eno Etta and Cam Brandt both continue to get shout outs as well as far as playing in the rotation. I think Etta is going to get into that 2021 Mike Morris role. I think they like him on the strong side, but he can move inside really well and play like that three technique. He's going to be super yeah. versatile, a guy that can play all over the defensive line. But rotations or not, these two dudes are going to lead the way. And Stewart took on Agent Zero. The number he wore at Coastal Carolina, I thought it was funny. He said he tried to get it from Mikey Sainer still last year, and he basically told him, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Gave him his blessing to wear it this year. But uh, look, it you're going to have attention on you anyway. But that number, I mean, Mike Sainer still made it legendary in one year, basically. Well, two years, mm -hmm. but um, has made that number legendary. And you're, you're bringing more attention on you. And Stewart seems to, to enjoy that. Not just as a player, but again as a leader, feels like he, he's taking a leap here, year two, as a senior, but year two here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just even yeah, just th those two guys. I mean, you're talking about you know they had the potential to be one of the best duos in the country. I mean, even the best e interior, you know, with, with Mason and Kenneth, probably not even probably they're the best duo defensive tackles in the country too. So, um, you know. The, both guys have NFL draft pick quality written all over them. You know, I think, um, you know, Josiah Stewart has a chance to really kind of cement his status as a, as a high drafted guy. Um, if, if you can get some production off the, uh, off the edge there, I think those two guys have just been, been, you know, running the show, um, you know, and, and, Again, I think it's all now just about building depth. I mean, we all know what both of those guys can can bring. Um, it, it, all four of those guys, really. Um, so, again, you hope you know Etta steps up, and and I, I just his name just keeps coming up, keeps coming up, unprompted. Um, not even asking about him. You know, Trey Pierce is there too, a young guy on the interior. Um, Cameron Brandt, another guy too, that saw a little bit of playing time early last year. So there's, again, it's, it's, it's very similar to the offensive line is where you have guys that you can write in and pen, but if you have specific guys, who can kind of hit that ceiling that they have, or even, you know, blast through the ceiling, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have a hell of a lot of production from that offense or defensive line beyond, those four guys, um, you know, maybe there's more snaps that oh, I just hit my, hit my mouse. Um, maybe there's more snaps beyond what's available, you know, what was available last year and which maybe, you know, gives more opportunities to, um, you know, have the, the, the main four guys kind of see more snaps than last year. But again, there's so much talent on that defensive line group. It's just it, it's crazy if that if they can hit on that type of uh, trajectory that they're on, and um, you know the, the addition of Lou Esposito, I think is is the more I read about it, the more I think about it, I really like it. I, I really I really like his addition. Uh, knows how to develop talent, knows how to identify talent. Um, yeah, I mean guys like Braden Fisk or whatever went on to have successful careers elsewhere, but you know, those were guys that weren't really highly recruited. They, they brought that Western Michigan brought in and, and eventually they moved on. So um, I, I think that's a really good, that's a really good hire. And I think that'll play into someone like, you know, at his development, 
really well is just, you know, Esposito really just working with these guys. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's really not much more I can add outside of, you know, Ed is getting a ton of hype and I'm buying into the stock. I'm, I'm all in on the, on the stock too. So, uh, it's just, yeah, there's a lot to like there. And again, as I said, if they hit that, if they hit that ceiling, they're going to be a, a really damaging defensive line uh, for not just this season, but years to come as well. Yeah, like you said, Josh, this is a group where, barring any injuries or anything else, you know the four guys on the defensive line that are running out there on the first defensive snap of the season. And that's obviously Josiah Stewart, Derek Moore, and then Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. You know, now that Michigan has those four guys set and you know who your starters are going to be, I feel like it's then easier to work in and, like you were talking about, develop guys like Eno at a TJ guy, Cam Brandt, Trey Pierce, all those guys, get them developed and then build up that that uh, so-called second unit to, to make it stronger and things like that. So, I mean, a lot, lot to be excited about. I see right here Adam saying that Josiah Stewart and, and Derek Moore are both going to get double-digit sacks. I wouldn't rule that out. I would not rule that out at all. You, I, that, that's, that's, a, that's bold because, I mean, you're, you're talking about like Aiden Hutchinson and David, o, David Ojabo type of production there out of those two guys. But I, I would not rule it out, especially if they, if they wreak havoc in the non-conference games. You know, it'll be harder now that that Texas isn't it, Texas is an opponent, but it, it's 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 possible for sure to see both of them reaching ten. I've already said Josiah Stewart is double digit sack for for me this year. He did it as a freshman at Coastal Carolina. They moved him into kind of a weird rover position where he lost weight and just wasn't doing the same thing anymore. Uh, he gained weight last year. He looks bigger and stronger than ever. Um, and he's always had this undersized tag on him. And then you just see him absolutely bully offensive linemen. Uh, the Alabama game, last play of the game, right? Just absolutely backs his linemen up. He's added some more technique as well. Um, you know, between him and Harold, I think it was 14 sacks combined between the two of them. So, as much as I think TJ guy can be a part of the rotation, it's not going to be 50, 50, like it was last year. I, I just don't see that Stuart Stewart's going to have a gap there. You're going to want to keep him fresh and rotate, but I, I think he's going to play significantly more snaps, which more opportunities. Right. And, and Derek Moore, same thing, split snaps with Braden McGregor last year. I like, you know, at a, a lot. Um, I posted, I think it was like three weeks ago about get on the hype train now. Because the same thing Josh said, his name just keeps coming up. And, and sometimes it comes up, you know, I, when I did my position breakdown, somebody messaged me like, Hey, here's kind of what we're hearing about him. But other than that, if I'm just like, Hey, if you heard dude, Adam, it just, it, his name keeps coming up. So, and, and not in a, you know, you, you see coaches and guys sometimes hype dudes up in a way that they're trying to motivate him. This is just people are really excited to talk about, you know, at a, his potential on that line. So, and, and again, the interior, we didn't even get into a healthy ratio on Benny and what yeah. he's going to mean. Yeah. It's a tackle. Yeah. I mean, that front is going to be just outrageous. Yeah.